welcome to the World Transform. Tonight we're talking about infinite computing or infinite hype. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Phil. How are you? Well, I am super fantastic. How are you, my friend? Man, I am doing well. I'm doing well. I'm looking forward to this one tonight. Uh, infinite computing. Uh, infinite computing means you can do anything. But is it infinite computing or is it infinite hype? You know, I'm a marketing guy. I spend a lot of time in marketing. And I'm especially sensitive to things like this. And as you know from years of doing this show together, I'm a big fan of misleading headlines, right? I think that's probably <laughs> my absolutely favorite thing in the world. You, so. you collect them like, uh, I don't know, bottle caps or something. Yeah, absolutely. Funny. It's a hobby of mine. And this one was just so perfect because the headline on Facebook, when it shows up in your news feed is, what if we could unlock infinite computing power? And I'm like, wow, that's fascinating. What does it even mean, infinite computing power? I have to click on that to go find out about infinite computing power. Because Stephen is going to wonder, what could we do if we had infinite computing power? And we're going to have to talk about it, right? So, exactly. Then you get to the page, and it says, what if we could unlock our computer's maximum memory and processing power. Okay. But even if I had maximum power, I, that would not be infinite. You might have one of those fancy systems with infinite power built in, but not me. No. Yeah, this, so. is, this is called a bait and switch, okay? I'm sorry, but <laughs> you can't put one, one headline. To, you know, this is clickbait and switch, clickbait and switch, basically. What if we could unlock infinite computing power? And then you get there, and it's like, ah, oh, they'll read it anyway. It's really just about computers' maximum memory and processing power. And that's when I noticed that the page actually says on it, presented by Intel. And I'm like, ah, okay. Uh, so it's mad. Okay. Professional courtesy here. Here's some stuff written by a marketing person. But let me, let me read just a little, because I do love marketing copy. It's one of my favorite things. But let me, let me read this here. Okay. Imagine, to begin, a computer that responds to an idea immediately. A director could recut her film to respond to the audience in the theater. An artist could sketch out a sculpture as it 3D prints in real time. A writer could ideate on a notepad while personalized software turns each concept into a finely tuned sentence written in the writer's own voice. Now speculate even further by bringing a bit from each of these three ideas together. Picture a writer who begins the first words of her script. Science fiction, year 2500. We find our hero in the midst of a Martian sandstorm. And just like that, the picture appears on her screen. Our hero, armed in a spacesuit, hides behind a rock as the red storm descends. As the idea literally takes form, the next scene comes straight to our writer's mind. Well, what do you think? That all sounds pretty awesome, right? I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah that's what do they call it when uh, they, uh, they storyboard it. They storyboard yeah. uh, uh, movies like this where in, you, know, you literally have a sketch of each scene well, this would be a 3D storyboard then, wouldn't it? At least. I don't know. It sounds to me yeah. like it's almost just making the movie, right? It's, yeah, it's, at real time almost. Yeah, you've gone beyond storyboarding. It's kind of like real-time movie creation while you, while you talk. And earlier, those other examples, just real-time stuff creation. So it's like real t this is just This is a sufficiently advanced technology that it's almost indistinguishable from magic, right? It's just right on the... Right right on the core, what's being discussed here. So uh, let me just read a, one more line here. We're accelerating towards such a reality more quickly than it may seem. Intel Core i7 Plus processors come armed with Optane memory, which intelligently caches the data necessary to perform high-level tasks, blah, blah, blah. And then it goes into talking about the Intel chips, and they, they sound wonderful. These, these processors sound like they're going to provide an awful lot of good productivity boosts for the organizations that have machines that run them. So I'm not down on Intel. Intel's a wonderful company. They make wonderful products. But what's going on here? You know, they're giving us these really kind of science fiction computing scenarios, and then they're talking about their chip, which isn't really going to do any of those things, right? I mean, we're not going to see any of this happening. And if, if you read the whole piece, obviously this is all just kind of blue sky speculation. And, <laughs> hey, we've, hey, we've so, got these wonderful So chips. they, they right. mentioned this specific chip, the uh, Intel Core i7, and they, they talk about their great things. <laughs> I love this this hedging. Uh, so it's absolutely in the realm of possibility that a computer could one day very soon be capable of doing all these things. Right. <laughs> yeah. Are they saying the i7 will? No, they are definitely not saying that. <laughs> well, they're not saying they've built a computer using the chip that will do that, that's for sure. Will the Intel Core i7 Plus processor support that capability? doesn't read like it actually will. Yeah. Somebody you know what this reminds to... me of? The, the old AT&T commercials. Remember those where they, they 
we'll talk about, uh, and it was, I think it was Tom Selleck that was reading the ad copy for the, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. the commercial. One day you will, uh, and AT&T will be the company that brings it to you or whatever. Of course, right. <laughs> when I think of innovation, I always think of AT&T. But anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, that, that was a, that was not well, but, um, hey, you know, hey, AT and T's come a long way. I mean, the, uh, still kicking, which is pretty impressive. Or at yeah, least the, that, that's right. They're still with us. So yeah. there's that. Actually, the company called AT and T is actually the renamed one of the spinoffs of AT and T. That whole history itself would be worthy of, of of a show to talk about what the entity that we call AT and T today actually is related to the company that Tom Selleck was talking about back in those days. But but it's true. Those were great projections of things that eventually some of them came true. We did a show about that, right? Where somebody had right, we did, we did about a year had, ago. Yeah, had gone through those predictions, and it's like, yeah, that one was pretty close. This one was way off, and a lot of them, where they were off, was because it was predicated on the idea that there'd still be fixed wireline technology, and that you'd need a phone company, right? Anytime, right. anytime you, you had a future scenario that could really be dependent on that kind of stuff, that's the direction they went. And right. so they weren't really thinking about mobile. And, and, a lot, and, they, and, they, they, and none of those ads anticipated having computational power in your hand in the form of a universal device like what we call a cell phone, a, a smartphone. The fact that you could buy tickets uh, uh, to a concert at an AT, uh, ATM, well, that, yeah, you, you could do that. There's no, no reason technologically you couldn't. But why in the world would they build that into an, uh, an ATM when you, when you can do it in the palm of your hand with your own cell phone? They couldn't yet imagine making a lot of money off cell phones. That's why. So, that's right. But, uh, so, yeah, so I think this is kind of akin. This, this Intel yep. business is sort of akin to those old AT&T commercials. Yeah, well, one, you know, you'll one day be able to do all these fantastic things, and uh, the company that will bring it to you is Intel. So. Yeah, personally, I'm totally okay with this. Yeah. I, I think anybody who buys the Intel Core i7 Plus processors based on this, they're still getting a good computer, right? I mean, if, oh, yeah. if, if, if they buy this thinking they're going to do those things, then they're idiots, all right? I think it's a positive thing to dream about the future. Hence, exactly. We've, you know, hence doing this show for the last, uh, let's say, about 13 years now. You know, I mean, that's, that's right. That's I mean, what, who, who would we, we be? Who would we be to to criticize anybody for speculating about future technologies and for engaging in a little blue sky? So I'm always really pleased yeah. when a big company does something like this. It's like, that's right. Yeah. That's the way you need to be thinking. And I'm glad that they're thinking about these kinds of applications. And when I'm reading their description of things going on, you know, uh, 3D printers working at the same time as computers that basically write for you once you give them an idea – that's out there a little bit. Yeah, that's a step or two. Yeah. You know, that's the deep possible, a, a lot of it. So I like that they're thinking about those kinds of applications, that they tie it into their current technology. Well, still marketing. They, they, had to put their, they had to put their brand on it, and they are trying to sell something, so fair enough. But the fact that they're thinking about those kinds of things, I think, is right. Even if they get things completely wrong, it's better to, to, to be looking out ahead than not to be looking out ahead. It's better to be thinking right. about what's, what's going to be coming a few steps down the road than never to give that a thought because then you're always going to be surprised. You're always going to be wrong. This might not be right, but what does happen will be less surprising to the people who work on it who've thought about these things in advance because then they can say, well, it wasn't exactly like that, but it's like this. But I've been thinking about this for a long time, right? That we've, we've been looking at this for a long time. And I think it, I think it can make... And, and, a, and the future will turn out to be analogous to this in some way, probably. Right. It's always a worthy thing to do this so yeah that's it's i think i think uh, some of this may actually come to be and and s some of it not quite but close and some of it not at all some but, of them very different yeah very, very yeah. different so yeah. we we shall see i liken this to this link i found on facebook i thought this was really cool a 1950s government educational film called why space and just <laughs> when you get a minute just follow that link check that out so here's the U.S. government explaining why we need to go to space to high in school students in the 1950s. Yeah. And it's actually probably a little more grounded than what we're seeing in the first paragraph of this Intel piece. But just a little more. I mean, you know, because I, I, I suppose we knew something about space at the time anyway. And we had some idea of what kinds of technology we were going to be using to get there. But it, it's still that very aspirational, very, this is where we've got to go. And, of course, 
it's a little bit of a Cold War propaganda piece too, right? I, I'm pretty sure right. this must have come out right after Sputnik. And it's like, well, here's why we're going to go in and win the space race. You know, this is – Got to have the high ground. Yeah, yeah we're going to get – exactly. We're going to get the high ground. But they take the high ground in it, right? So they're not talking about military applications or any of that kind of stuff. They're, they're just oh. talking about it being this kind of next step for humanity. And it's, it's a wonderful piece. It's great. When you look at what's happened in space – since the 1950s, probably you don't see a lot of resemblance, but I bet there's a lot of people who made the things that have happened in space happen who watched that film, right? That yeah. it, pushed, it pushed things along. It, 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 helped, it helped to make stuff happen. And I think I, I love past futures for that reason. Yeah, me too. I mean, it's, yeah. Whenever you get an opportunity to see like uh, some presentation of uh, – old Disney things that are no longer in existence anymore where they, right. they uh, it's sponsored by the, you know, the, the Chevrolet company. Here's what the car of the future looks like. It's like that. Yes. I mean, it is wonderful. I mean, that stuff is fun. One of my favorite ads that showed them like pulling a turntable out of the de- center dash so you could play yeah. a record. <laughs> yeah. Like that would work, but you know what we've got instead of that, we've got, uh, we've got, you know, CD, uh, and, and actually, most cars, are, you know, you're not even bothering. Mo- uh, yeah, hardly uh, anybody's loading CDs, CDs anymore. anymore. Yeah. You know, like, nobody's doing that anymore. You're just MP3s now. Yeah, I've but, got my uh, phone on the Bluetooth, and I just <laughs> tell it to play a song and try to stump it once in a while, right? It's like, it's like <laughs> Amazon Music, and don't even, don't even bother with MP3s anymore. I just let it stream, right? But that so. was great because it gave the message, oh, you could have your music collection. You could listen to any music you wanted to. Right. By the standards of the day, right there in your car. Imagine that. Imagine how such a thing might be possible. And then when, when it does come true, it happens in a, a, way a you thousand don't times see. more interesting than that, right? And more powerful than that. But, <laughs> That's right. But, but at least they were thinking in that direction. And I like this last piece that we've got a link here, and I just want you to follow this. World's tiniest computer makes a grain of rice seem massive. It could lead to big changes in health monitoring. You read about this and you say, okay, well, this is real now, okay? This device exists. And the kinds of applications they're talking about here for this device are next couple of years, right? Next few years, within, within a decade or so. So it makes a nice kind of bookend for the kind of speculation that we start out there at the beginning. There was a time not that long ago when talking about a tiny little computer smaller than a grain of rice being used to do these kinds of applications would have been the crazy hype that you see at the beginning of what we talked about here at the beginning of the show, right? Right. And now it's I mean, almost of, fantastic voyage kind of idea, sci-fi kind of, and, and, and the fact that now we have it. Now, the thing is we, we, uh, we don't have the killer app for that yet, right? Sure. Uh, we, yeah. you know, we, we don't yet have it to where we're, you know, there's a reason to do it because we, we figured out how to solve this huge health problem by using it. But uh, that, yeah, give, it, give it time. Uh, just that a few will years, uh, the thing that we do with it will follow the, our capability. And so now that we have it, we'll, uh, there'll, be, there'll be reasons that we use it. And, that's and, awesome. and what's cool about that is, too, it, it still thus remains aspirational, right? It's still, ah, well, there's still this future that we, ha- that we have yet to figure out, even though the technology has arrived. So right. there's, there's always room for hype. I guess that's what I'm saying, speaking as a marketing guy. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's always, basically, Phil, you're arguing for your job, and that's uh, – You know, there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's always a place for Phil. And, we, uh, we could always use a little more Phil-style hype. That's, and you know what? You get it here three times a week at least, and that's, that's, that's what right. we're all about. Speaking of which, we're going to be back on Friday with some more speculating about the future and some more interesting – topics related to technologies and related to what's coming next. Been great talking with you, Stephen. Been great having you all with us. And until next time, live to see it.